Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's a wonderful morning. Getting everybody, all the social media people posting pictures of the empty tomb. Amen. Marking that he is risen. So, yeah. Well, open with me to Philippians chapter 3. We're going to continue on with uh, this walk that the Apostle Paul has established. Verse 15 is where we left off. And we're, we're kind of building around uh, uh, solidarity, unity, uh, focusing on, on our walk through this life. And uh, verse 15 and 16, we're going to hopefully, maybe we'll finish today. I don't know. This is, but uh, we'll start with verse 15, though. It says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything, Ye be like, uh, be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again. We thank you for this blessing uh, that we, we can celebrate the, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that we know that there is an empty cross and there is also an empty tomb but father we know that your death burial and resurrection established the needed way of salvation for us to accept you as our savior you paid the sin on the cross for us and father i'm thankful for the lessons that the apostle paul laid down in his epistles as we studied through them and how we're to walk focused on you in our walk focused as a group together walking in the same manner, almost arm in arm. But Father, where solidarity, unity, and one-mindedness is, is important. And he taught that throughout all of his, his epistles. Now, Father, I do pray that you would have control of this service, that it's your words, not mine, that we glorify you in all that we do, and we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, as we left off last week, we were talking about Paul's encouragement and with that he was wanted the Philippians to share his attitude we, we talked about how that there are many mature Christians we're going to talk a little bit more about th that maturity but that there are some that were mature thinking that they had arrived I don't need to go any further I am as perfect as I'm going to be so therefore I don't need to learn anymore. I don't need to study. I don't pray. You know, all these weird things can come through your mind. But I think an honestly, an honest, mature Christian would say, "I need to study more. I need to pray more. I need to fellowship more." And it, and and it's so important in our lives because we've been told many times, if we're not moving forward, we're actually moving backward. Mm -hmm. And so we see that the, the mind that the, the Apostle Paul was talking about. Uh, uh, was a mature and perfect in the sense that it's useful for the application. It's like uh, there are people that uh, have a, a certain hammer that they use and only feels really good in their hand. And if something ever happens to that, they just don't feel right if they're not using it. Uh, watching a stonemason using a hammer to chip away at the bricks uh, with, with the right hammer. I mean, you could use a ball-peen hammer, you could use uh, any number of types of hammers, but a mason's hammer's got a nice pick on the end where you can just chip away little bits at a time. A roofer, in the, in the days when they didn't have pneumatic nailers, the hammer that he had was balanced just right. And it was set so that he could put a little, a, a little screw in there and he knew exactly where that shingle needed to be put every time. Lay it down there and a good, uh, uh, roofer, he'd have a handful of nails and he could just pop them out one hand, you know, and just nail them right in. A friend of mine's dad used to uh, come home with his fingers all bloody because oftentimes he would hit it and he wouldn't get his fingers out of the way quick enough. And there were some marks where those roofing nails were in there. Um, a machinist uses a ball peen hammer. A, a, a body man uses a, a, a body uh, hammer that, that can have a myriad of different faces. Certain hammers for the right tool is a perfect tool. And it's it may not be perfect for the next person. 
It's just like some people, they're matured at different levels. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more about different people at different levels, but some people just get things a lot easier. They understand it. They can uh, not make it difficult. I, I have to laugh at all these well-educated men that make all these extra weird words about the gospel. And you have to have a dictionary to sit alongside of it to figure it out. But if we were to look uh, uh, in, in Luke 18, uh, it talks about the, the parable of the Pharisee and the publican. If we turn there real quick, we take a look, um, and I want to, the, the question that comes to mind when we look at that, of uh, what type of maturity was displayed. And in verse 18, or uh, ch uh, chapter 18, verse 9, it says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men or, or uh, as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all I possess. The publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house, justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. So it begs the question, it says, how does the publican reflect this mature nature that Paul laid out in the, the verse we were talking about, Philippians 3, 12 through 14? And then it's called out in verse 15. So wh what attitude did he display? Pastor? He knew he needed mercy. He knew he needed mercy. Yes, he saw himself that, that you know, like I said, he couldn't even look up. You know, and how, how many times uh, have we seen people that are boastful about what they've done? Oh, man, boy, I, I did this, I did that. I, you know, every door I knock on, somebody accepts Christ as their Savior. That may be great, but they're running around bragging. Who's bragging? God gets really the bragging. God has all the bragging rights. So, you know, he, a humble, repentant, you know, and a mature Christian, what John say every time he, he said, the, the closer I draw to him, the lesser I become, it's kind of paraphrasing. That's how we are. The closer we draw to Christ, the more we become like him on this earth, we, we get more and more of ourselves get pushed out. And it's, it's, uh, it's interesting when you can kind of compare that to, uh, well, we used to do hydrostatic testing of, of the, the, the nuclear power system. And it was always, there was like 3,000 gallons in there. We had to hydrostatically test the system to 150% to of its operating pressure. Well, that meant that we had to fill it completely with water. Well, a lot of the system operated with what was called a surge tank that had a certain amount of gas in it. Well, we had to keep filling that up, filling it up, and filling it up until we got water out of the vent. And then we started pressurizing it. And it was amazing. Every we, more pressure we put on, we could put more water in more pressure went up, the more water went in. Well, look at us when we have more of the, the Holy Spirit in our lives, we draw closer to Christ. Ourselves is like the air that's within that system. We can get rid of it, but the more the Holy Spirit comes in, the more that air gets compressed, compressed, and compressed. And finally gets to a point where you could say, it, well, you have all the water that you could possibly put in there used to laugh and say, well, if water's an incompressible liquid, then why can when we put the pump on there, can we put more water in? Pressure goes up. Where's it going to go? Well, it's getting squeezed. Well, that's what happens to us. We get less and less of ourselves and more and more of the Holy Spirit in here. And so, like the public, we, we should be looking at ourselves as we really are. Or, you know, as God see, saw him, he saw him humble. He, he should see us as humble. And oftentimes when he doesn't see that, he's like the potter. Oh, there's a little bit of dirt in there. I'm going to flick it out. And when he does, there's, you know, kind of a little pain when something happens. But what's he do? He smooths it over. 
When we stumble and fall, when we sin, what's he do? He picks us up, he dusts us off, and restores us. And so that is a, a person that's like-minded, that looks at God. But the word otherwise-minded uh, comes in here in the end of it. It says, uh, and if in anything ye be otherwise-minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. And it, it's uh, a term uh, high-minded or have a high opinion of yourself, kind of like that publican did. And, you know, uh, as one person put it, he says, he who thinks that he's attained everything hath nothing. And this is, uh, it, it, and referring to those who think uh, that they've attained perfection through the law, Galatians 3, 3 says, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now perfect by the flesh? You know, are the deeds that we do making it that much better? And, you know, uh, Philippians 3, 3, 3, uh, early on, it says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. There are many things that we do in this world that we do because of the talent that we're given or the, the abilities that we have, and we do it apart from the Holy Spirit. And sometimes that won't amount to anything. The Lord knows what our heart is. If some people have if excellent talents in, in, in an area, and what they do is they give uh, they give glory to the Lord in how they do it, then it's going to be useful. But if it's just done, in the, uh, as a lot of people say, in the arm of the flesh, oftentimes we're going to hear about it when we get to that judgment seat. We're going to be told, you know, remember when you did that? Oh, yeah, man, that was, I was deceitful. He goes, that, you didn't do it with the right attitude. Right? Going to kind of get a, uh, you know, what, a, a spanking, so to speak, or a, a just, but an admonishment. We're going to be told that wasn't going to get you anything more. And so it's it's dangerous in some people. And, and the Jews, they were, you know, this, well, we have the law, we're all knowledgeable. And the Apostle Paul kind of had that until he got knocked to the ground when he got saved. And I can think every one of us, when we got saved, we sort of got knocked to the ground. We had to be told that what you were doing wasn't right. Wasn't going to get you into heaven. Some of us were relying on a lot of things. But now if we're relying on the Lord Jesus Christ, that salvation that was given to us by faith, that grace that was given to us. Uh, Galatians 5.10 says, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none wise, otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And it's in other words, otherwise minded, the Lord will show them uh, the, the issues. Uh, a couple of examples were in Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. It said, is, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, Father, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. It's amazing, the, uh, some people uh, may not be highly educated, but they can grasp a concept very simply and present it very simply. Uh, I mean, when we talk about the plan of salvation, it's very simple. But how many in the world make it difficult? They add, well, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. Or you look at it this way. It's not right. It's mm -hmm. by faith that we come to that. And we're given that grace. And, and it's that, and, and, and another example would be in, in Matthew 16, 17, where Peter uh, answered, uh, when, he, when he asked, you know, who, who, who do people say that I am? And Jesus answered him back and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. God will show us, if we listen carefully, if that we're doing things appropriately that we're doing them correctly. It'll also tell us, hopefully we're listening, when we're not doing them correctly. It's like, Lord, you know, I just, you know, I, I, please forgive me, you know, I just, I want to hang on to this one little thing that I want to do. No, he, he wants us out of our lives. You know, and he knew that many of the people in, 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 in Philippi, they were going to agree with him. 
but in some areas they were going to, you know, they would be otherwise minded. They may not agree fully with him. And verse 16 is going to talk about that a little more. But he knew that while his readers basically agreed with him, they might not be otherwise minded or disagree with him on some minor points. Maybe they didn't fully agree with how he presented something. And he was willing to listen to them. It's just like every one of us here, we have an understanding of certain things. That's why a lot of us come to the pastor with questions. Say, would you help us explain this or understand a little bit better? Some people go, well, I don't quite see it that way. And it's wonderful when Christians sit down and they can talk with each other and, and ask questions. Well, you know, I see it this way and, and offer what their thought is on it, opinion or however you want to put it. But, you know, Paul wanted to encourage them because their attitudes were correct, how they approached it. They didn't come with each other uh, getting at each other's throats, as we see a lot of people today. If you disagree with somebody on something and you present your side of the story and it doesn't agree with them, they have all sorts of horrible things to say. And even there are some Christians out there that have the same attitude. And it's not right. We should be able to have a mutual disagreement but to make it such that it's respecting each other, respecting that person's word. You may not agree with them, but you can say, well, that's a very interesting point, but I don't agree with you here. And, and you can talk about your differences. It may not solve it. You may, you might win them over, you never know. Or they might win you over, you know, you, know, you don't know what it is. But he was not looking for an open disagreement, but give them a revelation that they should understand more of God's purpose in their lives. In other words, we can have that disagreement. There's some groups out there that goes, well, you know, we need to put our dogmas aside. And, you know, we need to slip the Bible off. So we just need to agree on these things. Well, we need to agree on what Scripture says. Amen. If Scripture says it, there's no opinions on it. There may be a way a person interprets it and applies it to their lives that may be equally the same as long as it's not you know obviously blasphemy going along you know where you know well in order to be saved like they were telling a lot of people you have to be circumcised you have to be a jew you have to speak in tongues or you have to get the baptism of the holy spirit or you have to be baptized the minute you're saved and then you can't no those were for a time those were what the apostle paul was trying to to get under control. He did not say how God would do this, but he said that God will reveal it. And as we're going through there, have, have a unity in that spirit. It says we're not to stop growing spiritually because a lot of people think they get to a certain point, they don't need to go any further. Uh, but we need to be, we can be otherwise minded in some areas. But as long as we're agreeing to move forward, bring what's in the scriptures, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the divinity of Christ. Just walk down through the well, the, the tenets that we taught here not too long ago. The, 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 a lot of people call them Baptistic doctrines, but they're the New Testament doctrines. What the New Testament church was said about. You know, God helps us stay focused. That's what he does. He gives us the wisdom on focusing. We need to listen and to heed what God is telling us. And, and all too often people are closing their ears off. And it's, when we think of that unity, uh, we, can, we can go into thinking on the next one, Paul's exhortation in verse 16, uh, where he says, Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. And as, as he's looking at this, he's telling them, or, or, uh, exhorting them to, and encouraging them to walk in harmony with the truth they'd already attained. In other words, the teaching that he'd given them, he wanted them to walk ahead and to, to walk toward that goal, uh, as he was talking about, focusing on, on what God wanted them to do. And it would guide them as they walked on this earth. You know, we can, we can tell people, you know, there are certain things that we should be doing as a Christian. There are certain things that we shouldn't be doing as a Christian. And the Apostle Paul was trying to get that across. And he says, uh, and it's an excellent way to look at it, is that people uh, 
learn at different rates. I don't care who they are. Um, you know, I, I look at the young family, how, how uh, Julia, I think she, she smiles and she says, I can count to 100. I said, well, what's after 100? 100 and, she goes, one, 100 and two. And, and, and I says, so what's after 199? 200. I said, you can count to 200. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, I, I look, at, look at them because their parents care about how they learn and what they learn. Early in life, I mean, they all signed as, as before they could speak, probably even before they could walk. And they, you know, they, they were able to communicate. You know, I look at them. And then I look at somebody else that might be along the same way, might not be learning. They might not know their colors, might not count. I mean, you know, the alphabet. They might be coming along at a different rate, but they're progressing as they're able to progress. And, and, and it's interesting, it, it, it's such that uh, if uh, the most wise and valuable rule is, is that uh, would save much of the difficulty that we have if we think about people get things differently. You know, uh, meaning that though there uh, might be different degrees of attaining among Christians, there are different views on subjects. Kind of interesting when you think about that. Yet there are more points in which uh, they could agree, and there are there were attainments which they all made, and in, in reference, uh, they should walk in harmony and love. Just because somebody doesn't agree with you, maybe on oh, uh, but we'll we'll take around Easter. Some people have differing opinions on the timeline that was occurring with Christ going to the cross or the timeline from, uh, from the cross to the resurrection. And you can, you, you can divide it up and divvy it up and you know, go through it, but we knew the first day of the week it says he, 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 uh, he rose from the grave. And they also said before the Sabbath, they, he couldn't be hanging on the tree. So we knew those two were pretty definite. And you can go through and you can say, well, you know, he went through this time. For, you can come up with all sorts of scenarios. And it was always fun to listen to some of them. And just say, well, Lord, what am I supposed to understand here? He died on the cross. He was taken down before Passover. And on the first day of the week, when they went down, went to the grave, it was empty. Okay, I know those. And, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so it's important that we, we, we understand it. But it might be some, you know, made a, some people have greater advances than others. You know, go back to the young kids. Well, one, because their mother's a, a school teacher and their dad's got a PhD in electronics. You know, I mean, how do you start? What I found out is people that have parents like that, they tend to be really sharp and able to grasp things because of how they're taught. And so it says, it, it might be that some uh, have made greater advances than others. They might uh, have more elevated views uh, in, in religion. And a lot of those go on to Bible college or are able to sit there and just be able to expound on things. Um, the note I made here is I think it was Billy Sunday. He don't, I don't think he even finished grade school, if I'm not mistaken. And yet here he goes on. He was a great evangelist. Um, Dr. Ironsides, I think he only went to the eighth grade. Yet he was a voracious writer and speaker and, and teacher. And, you know, some people just grasp the gospel a lot easier than others. They had a higher knowledge and therefore, in a lot of cases, they were nearer to perfection in a lot of ways. They took what the Lord gave them and then used it and grew in the life. Some of us are always going to be down toward the bottom of the rung, accepting things, but we're still being used. God uses every one of them to the ability that they can. You know, others have a less advantage of education instruction, maybe. You know, I think of those that are, uh, well, right now, that aren't uh, able to sit in church with us. They can take advantage like we're doing with on the internet, like a lot of the churches are doing today. Um, but the sad part is that some of these people are going to take advantage of that. That's the only way they're going to go to church. I'm going to turn on my computer, I'm punch in, go right there, and I'm not going to do anything else. And just watch. Where it's important that once we get out of the situation that we're in, that we come back into church and we gather together because it's important that we not forsake the assembly of others. Now we're assembling virtually, electronically, 
but it's important that that physicalness is, is there. You know, there are few that had, there are some that had fewer opportunities of making progress in that life. Some people maybe because of their uh, uh, socioeconomic situation might not allow them to go to church every Sunday. Maybe they live way out in the country. Uh, you know, I, I think back in the, the, the earlier days where, you know, you went to church in uh, a horse and buggy. Oftentimes, church services lasted all day. You come in the morning, you bring a lunch, you stay there all day. Some people, because of crops and, and, and things going on, might not be able to make it to church every Sunday. It's sad, but you know what? They make sure that they can study in the Word. We think of those that might not be able to come out to all services when we were meeting regularly due to maybe health conditions or, or maybe uh, they can't drive at night or, or they just aren't able to make it out to every service. They do spend time in there. And it, this is, uh, and some people just are at a learning level where they just don't understand maybe some of the mysteries that are explained in Scripture. Pastor can go over them day after day after day, and some people just go, I'm just not going to understand that. I can't. I don't know. I don't know why. It's, it's like I can read Scripture over and over and over again and get a different meaning each time I read it. Or there's sometimes when we read it, move on and goes, what did I just read? Some people are like that. Some people have got that memory where, oh yeah, I got it. That's what this means. Then there's others where a week later, I can remember, oh, that's what that means. <laughs> I've had that happen more than once, be out in the garage cleaning up going, oh yeah, what I just read a little bit earlier. That's what that means. And, you know, thank the Lord for it. But, you know, some may not see that truth right off, right off the bat. And but yet, there are some that see it and can apply it quickly. There are others that see it, don't fully grasp it, but maybe later on know how to apply it in their lives and see that grow. They're coming along, not everybody at the same time. We come along as we need to. And, and it's so important, but it's not worth a quarrel about that. Well, you've been in this church for 20 years. Why don't you understand every part of this scripture? Well, you know, just sometimes it just doesn't make it in. <laughs> you know, maybe that file cabinet drawer just won't open enough for it to get in there. Or I just haven't figured out how to unlock that. But it's not worth quarreling with. Because somebody, you know, I look at, at, at well, our congregation. We have a lot of degrees in here. People of a, of a varied level of education. But you know what? Nobody lords it over anybody else. Well, I have a PhD and you just got a bachelor's. Or an associate, sir. You didn't even make it through the grade school, you know, type thing. No, we don't have that. And it's sad when that does come up. Somebody starts lording, lording over their 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 uh, how they are. Well, we talked about in the book of James. The rich man comes in, and the poor man's there, and they go, "Oh, you know, this rich guy. We got to take care of. Him. He might give me a big tithe check." When the other guy has become basically his footstool, and it's not right. They're all the same. You know, there should be no angry feelings, no fault finding on either side. There should, there are many things which they could see alike. That's what they need to look at. The rich man, the poor man, for instance. Both of them, they know Christ as Savior. They both go into heaven. In God's eyes, they are equal. No one's better than the other. Just because one person has finer clothes than the other? No. Clothing doesn't make any difference. The outer does not make any difference. It's what's in the heart. And that's what the Apostle Paul's, you know, laying out to them. He says, you've got some different, you, you got, should have the same rules. And uh, that the, those, they can walk harmoniously. A rich man and a poor man, they can meet together and understand why. They might not be in the same social circles, but they can walk together and they can talk. Uh, there, there, uh, who are advanced of others, uh, should not complain of somebody that doesn't have maybe the education they have. But there are some groups out there that if you don't have that connection, you aren't going to talk to me. I don't want to talk to you at all. Uh, I've run into a lot of people that are that way. The a lot of oftentimes you uh, are working with uh, programmers, and electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and, and uh, people with a lot of degrees, if you don't talk their language, they don't want to talk to you at all. If you can't speak to them in a way that they understand, 
I just smiled and said, well, you know what, this doesn't work, fix it, and just give it back to him. So I said, well, you tell me what's wrong with this. No, 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 you wrote it, you designed it, you fix it. I can't assemble it that way. And all of a sudden, it might come out and go, uh, yeah, I did see my error here. Or just what were you talking about? Finally, they got out of their little tower and came out and says, we need to talk about this, get, get some common ground so I understand what's missing that you don't you can't do that. So well, if I put this part here and this part here, they can't go together because this piece is either missing or it's in the way. Oh, all right, I didn't quite see that. But you didn't argue about it. And sometimes, you know, it's just making it in such a way that, that, that when they, they look at that, they, they know that there's common ground. And that's how Christians should walk. Uh, the Apostle Paul, when he said people were presenting the gospel, he didn't, um, if they didn't present it exactly the way he did, he didn't come out and go, well, you know, look guys, they don't teach that gospel. No, he prayed for them. And he wanted to make sure that they understood that, you know, bringing the gospel is important. You know, so it's, it's, it's kind of like if you look at this, it's no better rule than this, that if a man does not see things as I do, let me try with uh, mildness to teach him or let him teach me. And let me believe that if he is a Christian, God will make this known to him, but let me not quarrel with him. Maybe look at his side of things. Neither of us uh, would be benefited by, by a quarrel. Or uh, they could uh, <clears throat> realize and maybe discuss between us. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I understand how you're coming from that point of view. And, and then all of a sudden, it's productive. They should definitely agree and not disagree. And, 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 and that's so important. This is knowing Christ is like a journey. And I think it comes right out of, out of the lesson guide. Knowing Christ is like a journey. We have not arrived at our destination. We can only take a step at a time, but we must keep on stepping. We must step in the right direction and we must avoid distractions. And we must reach our destination. So are we stepping or stopping? It's like running the race. If you're not focused on, on the, 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 the finish line and you're looking over your shoulder, the guy that's behind you is gonna pass you. And, and, and that's, the real goal is that we're focusing on, on, on the final destination, our eternal life in, in heaven. And as other Christians, they may disagree with us in some areas, but we need to realize what's the gospel say about it. And it's so important. And in the last little bit, I'm going to close this down with, with our, uh, our uh, case study. And it's kind of an interesting one. But uh, we get a, a chance here. It says, Shannon, I'm heading up to the woman's ministry at the church this year. I would like you to consider being in charge of our ministry to our missionaries. Let me know in a couple of weeks what you think. Alexis said to Shannon as they left their Sunday school class. Oh, I don't think so, Alexis. Shannon quickly uh, replied, I don't feel comfortable in positions like that. You would be great at it, Shannon. Are you sure? Well, I have too many issues with things I've done wrong in my past. I don't think God would want me to take part in such a ministry. So what, what's her thinking, Shannon's thinking on that? Is she right to continue to excuse herself from, from that service? She should at least consider it, I would think. Maybe, you know, it's, it's like, well, you know, people think I'm there. Well, maybe it's worth a try. You know, self-confidence always falls in, self-esteem. Um, how would uh, the truths of uh, Philippians 13, uh, 3, 13, and 14 change your perspective? How would that change your perspective? Pastor? Let's just put those things behind her going forward. Uh, no reason to stop them. So, exactly. And I've known people that say, well, you know, I, I've just never been able to do that. I tried it before and it's failed. Well, you know, try it again. <laughs> Maybe you'll pass. <laughs> I had to take several of my... Uh, <clears throat> classes over a few times because I took them a long time ago and they were acceptable. I tried to do them again and eh, like, well, let me just take a review on this one instead of jumping ahead. Um, so it's really Im Im important that this person, Shannon, not rely on what was behind. What did, what did the Apostle Paul say? 
I don't, you know, yeah, I don't look back on it. I don't let it influence my forward progress. And that's what was happening here. You know, so are we living according to that in our lives? Are we moving forward or are we stopped? Whether we're running or whether we're walking, we're in the race against ourselves. The devil's going to do his best to try to stop us. That doesn't work. We're focusing on the Lord. We're going to be moving forward. So with that, we can look at and realize that Paul encouraged the believers to be unified in their pursuit of knowing Christ. And when we look at that, vigorously pursue knowing Christ is what the real uh, outline for us is, is to do, is that we focus on that, not on what we did in the past. God's going to, he's going to remember the things that we've done once we've accepted the Lord, but he's looking forward. What did you do? What are you, what, what's going forward with it? Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the encouragement that we have in your word to go forward, not to stop. And Father, that we're to be unified in our, in our processes with each other. And Father, we should not be bickering about minor points in the Bible. Maybe we don't agree on some things, but Father, it's important that if we're Christians, that we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, that we would be able to walk forward understanding and listening to one another, that we can further the gospel, because all arguing does is let the world see that we don't know what we're talking about. And Father, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the unity that we see here. I'm thankful for the unity that we can go forward with and realize that that is our goal, is to be more like you in all that we do. And Father, we want to thank you and ask this all in Jesus' precious name.